With the end of support for Windows 10 fast approaching, do you have a plan? Between now and then, I plan on doing a series of videos to help you make a decision. Starting with this one, let's get into it. Microsoft is ending support for Windows 10 in October of this year, 2025, even though the majority of users are still on Windows 10. So we have some decisions to make. We can yield to Microsoft and go out and buy a new PC with Windows 11 on it. We can upgrade to Windows 11 on our unsupported devices using different methods out there. I've got two videos here on how to do that if that's the way you want to go. We can certainly switch to a different operating system like Linux for free. We can take a second mortgage out on our house to put a down payment down on a new MacBook. But is Linux for you? Is Windows 11 for you? Is Mac OS for you? There's a way to find out without spending a dime. And it's much easier than you think. And today we're going to do that. We're going to set up VirtualBox, creating a virtual machine on our computer that will allow us to run multiple operating systems without having to lose our information, without having to do any kind of a reinstall or upgrade because it'll all be done on a virtual machine. So I'm going to show you how to download and set up VirtualBox. And for our example today, we're going to download Linux Mint, set it up on the virtual machine and show you how it works. The first thing we need to do is check and see if virtualization is turned on on your PC. So let's go do that. All right, so before we can install VirtualBox, we need to make sure that virtualization is turned on on your computer. To check from the Windows computer, just press Control, Shift, and Escape. This will bring up the Task Manager. We're going to click on Performance over here in this menu. Then we're going to make sure that CPU is selected. Let me make this a little bigger so we can see it. If you can see down here at the bottom where it says Virtualization on this computer, it is enabled. If it is disabled, you'll need to restart your PC and enter the BIOS by pressing the appropriate hotkey during startup. Usually it's escape, F2, or delete. The key varies depending on your computer's brand. I'll put up a chart of common brands and keys, and I'll demonstrate real quick on an HP using the F10 key. All right, so I'm just going to restart the computer, and then I'll start tapping that escape key. Okay, my video capture device did not want to capture the restart process, so I'm filming it on the camera, so sorry about the quality. But basically, I'm in my BIOS settings, and if I navigate over here to configuration, you can see that virtualization is enabled on this PC. If yours is disabled, just click that to enabled. Once you've made the change, just go over here to exit, and then click save changes and exit, and your PC will reboot with virtualization enabled. Okay, now that we have virtualization enabled, we'll go ahead and go get VirtualBox, set it up, we'll grab the ISO for Linux Mint, and then we'll install it on the virtual machine. Between now and the end of support for Windows in October, I plan on doing a series of videos on how to get prepared and the options that you have. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those future videos. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, now that we have virtualization enabled, next we need to install VirtualBox. So let's head over to www.virtualbox.org. I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to click on this blue button right here. This will give us the latest version, which as of the recording of this video is 7.1. You're going to come down here and choose the operating system that you're currently using. For me, that's Windows. So I'm going to click on Windows Hosts. And that has started the download in the top right hand corner of my screen. Once it's completed, I'm going to go ahead and click on the installer right here. You'll get the user account control. Just click Yes. Now from this screen, I'm just going to click Next. I will accept the terms and click Next. And on the next setup screen, I will click Next. It's going to give you a warning here that you will be disconnected temporarily from your network. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the installation. On this next screen, it's going to tell you any dependencies that are missing that you need to run the virtual machine. So I'm going to tell it yes. And then here you have some additional options to create start menu entries, create a shortcut on the desktop, create a shortcut in the quick launch bar, register file associations. I'm going to keep all of these options selected. Now it's ready to install, so I'm going to click install, and the installation has started. 
All right, I'm gonna leave this box checked to start VirtualBox, and then I'm gonna click Finish. Okay, and here we are in VirtualBox. So once you're here and this is installed, next we need to get an ISO file. So for example, in this video, I'm going to download Linux Mint to run that on the virtual machine. But if you are wanting to install a different operating system, you'll need to go grab the ISO file for that operating system. For this video, we're gonna head over here to Linux Mint. Gonna go to the Linux Mint homepage here. This brings us to Linux Mint 22.1. If we click on download right here, it's gonna bring us to a page where there are three different flavors as they call them. So the first one is Cinnamon Edition. This is the one we're gonna use. This is the one I prefer, but there are two other editions you can read up on if you want to choose a different one. So I'm going to click the black download button here, and this will actually bring you to the download page. And you'll need to come down here to select a mirror. You can pick any mirror you wish. You can click on the first one for world. I'm just going to click on that one and this will start the download up here in the top right hand corner of our screen. However, when this one finishes, we're just going to leave it in the downloads folder for now. We're not going to click on it. Okay, now that it's complete, I'm just going to verify that it's in my downloads folder, which it is. This is the ISO for cinnamon. All right, now let's head back over to the virtual machine. On the left would display a list of all of the virtual machines, but we don't have one set up yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on new. Now this is going to open up a wizard that will walk us through the rest of the process. So we need to name our virtual machine. For this one, I'm just going to name it Linux Mint. Next, we're going to specify where we want to install the virtual machine, you just need to make sure that the disk that you choose has enough disk space. I'm gonna leave it where it's at. Next, we're gonna select that ISO image that we downloaded, which should be in your downloads folder. It's automatically going to detect the type and version. It does say Ubuntu here because Mint is built off of Ubuntu. So we're gonna go ahead and click next. On the next screen, you can type in a username and password, and you should definitely change that to something else. And then you want to toggle on guest additions here. This will give you better performance. I had to backtrack and update my host's name. It doesn't like two words, so I changed it to Mint. Now we'll click next. And here we're going to allocate resources. So keep in mind, the more resources you allocate to the virtual machine, the more you take away from your host. I have 32 gigabytes of memory available. I only need about four for the virtual machine right now. So I'm gonna change this to four gigabytes. Same thing with the CPUs. I only, I have, I have 12 available. I only need about four because we're just gonna be running Mint. It only uses these resources while the virtual machine is running. So keep that in mind. Next, we're gonna allocate hard drive space. I'm gonna use the virtual hard disk at 25 gigabytes, which is what it's already set to. If you check the box to pre-allocate the full size, then it will use up the full 25 gigabytes as where this dynamic version up here will only take up the space you're actually using. So I recommend going with the virtual hard disk drive. I'm gonna click next. Now this is given all of the information that we just set up. So this is our summary. I'm gonna go ahead and click finish. I'm gonna go ahead and click start on my machine to set up Mint. I'm gonna hit my enter button to start the install of Linux Mint. All right, now as you can see, we are in Linux Mint. Now to fully install Linux Mint, we need to come here. I will get it started, so I'm gonna double click install Linux Mint. If I expand this window, you can see it's not full screen, but we'll fix that. I'm just gonna go ahead and select my language, click continue. My keyboard layout, I'm gonna leave it English and click continue. I'm gonna skip installing multimedia codecs for now just to save time. You don't have to worry about this actually erasing your disk because you are on the virtual machine, not your actual hard disk. I'm going to click install now and continue. Make sure your correct region is selected, then continue. Fill out your information here. I'm going to leave that computer name, select you a password here. Linux will prompt you for this. Now I'm going to tell mine to log in automatically. That's not necessarily recommended. And it's now copying the setup files. I'll skip through this part. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and restart now. And again, this is just restarting the virtual machine, not our computer. But Linux doesn't know the difference. He thinks we have installation media in there, which we don't. I'm just going to click enter. 
Okay, and now we have a full version of Linux Mint installed on a virtual machine that's fully functional. Let's go ahead and fix this screen resolution. Up at the top under view, I'm going to first select auto resize guest display. I'm then going to go back and do full screen mode. It's let me know that we'll now be switched to full screen. You can go back to the windowed mode by pressing host plus F. That's identified as the right control key as host and then plus the F key. You can also go down to the bottom and the menu will pop up. We'll show that in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and switch and now we can navigate through Linux Mint. Refer to my Linux Mint video for all of the operations of Linux Mint. It's very similar to Windows. There's a lot of applications already installed. I want to keep this video about the virtual machine so that it don't get too long. So let's take a, a look at some of these other important options like take a snapshot. So you can take a snapshot of the virtual machine in its current state in case you need to reset it back to where it is now. You have a file manager so you can transfer files back and forth between the host system and the guest system. You can pause your virtual machine session. So if I click pause, it goes kind of dark here, black and white. So it's currently paused and not using any resources. I'm going to unpause it. And then if you look under devices, you can utilize the devices attached to your main computer. For example, any USB drives or shared folders, the clipboard, you can drag and drop. If you need to adjust screen resolution, you can do that here also under view. And if you go right here to ACPI shutdown, it's just like shutting down your computer. I'm going to click shut down and now I've shut down my virtual machine. And you can set up as many virtual machines here if you want to. And remember, they do utilize resources. So be mindful of having multiple machines running. And there you have it. You now have a virtual machine set up on your computer. So you are free to test all of the different Linux distros, different versions of Windows, and even Mac OS. What is your experience with virtual machines? Is this something that you will try? Drop me a comment below. Don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out tremendously. Check out some of these other video suggestions. And as always, thank you for watching and until next time.